during COVID, um, whether that's like, you know, dealing with health issues or dealing with the isolation or just dealing with the change or dealing with fear and stress, um, dealing with things that are outside of our control. Um, so there's been a lot of surrendering, a lot of reevaluation, a lot of quiet time, right? So in a way, as an artist, these are sort of things that are, are like natural, more natural for us, right? To be more contemplative. Um, for me, in a way, it's been nice to not have to um, run around so much, right? And so been able to sort of slow down and um, I haven't enjoyed the stress or the fear, the anxiety or the losses that have occurred, but some of the other things I think are silver linings and um, hopefully they're gonna make this workshop and my work in the future better, right? So we're always trying to grow, right? And learn from our life experiences. And like, this is, un you know, when people say this is unprecedented times, there are a lot of things that are happening in the world right now that have never happened before, <laughs> right? So, Absolutely. right. So that, that right there, and guess what? Like we're surviving it, right? We're, some of us are maybe even thriving, but we're definitely surviving and surviving is thriving, right? So give yourself a credit. Give yourself a lot of credit, you know, for wanting to stay creative, for wanting to learn art, for being a creative person. I give you credit. I respect you. I admire you all. And um, I'm really looking forward to painting and being with you for the next two days, right? It's a super experience for me. And um, it's as close as I can be to my peers. I wish I could see you guys in person, but I'm so glad you're here. Um, yeah, what that, One of the things I did uh, this summer, Yes. I, I wanted to do something new. You know, you're locked down, but you can get out. So yep. I, I taught myself to do wet cyanotypes. Oh, beautiful. I, I worked all summer on this stuff. And I mean, I did a lot of YouTube and, and things like that. And I didn't want the regular cyanotypes. I wanted the wet process. Mm. And so I felt, you know, I mean, I survived doing that, you know? Yeah, exactly. that's amazing. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. You know, my background is in photography. And so I'm always yep. trying to stay connected to photography. I'm always looking back to photography, to historical processes. Um, I started a beginning class with some people on Thursday and I was talking about um, the pictorialists, right? So um, I'm happy to show them on a screen share, but their images the cameras they were using, the techniques they were using, the prints, they look like wax pieces. I mean, they look basically like something I would take with a digital camera of a landscape and put wax on. They look like wax pieces, right? So it's so fun and awesome when you fa fall in love with something, with the look of something or the feel of something, that you can start to like see it in other mediums, right? Mm -hmm. And you can sort of like, also expand your vision and your sense of like image making to other things. And it's always good. I always encourage people to do other art forms, right? Like, well, I haven't, I haven't seen wax on it yet, but I've got yeah. several of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just see what happens. You never know. Yeah, you never know. And also if you're nope. feeling nervous, if you're feeling nervous about waxing an original, I'm a huge fan of scanning things or yep. taking a picture of them and reproducing them, right? Because this whole like art of photographing and reproducing is the essence of photography, right? So we're, when we're making a picture, we're going out there with the camera, we're pointing it at the world, we're recording it. And then we have all these options in Photoshop and filters and print colors, but it's the same thing. Like what if you do a wax piece or a cyanotype, or a photogram, right? Mm -hmm. A sign print, or even an, uh, you have a print that's old, and you take a picture of it and you reprint it. You play oh, yeah. around in Photoshop, and then you can make it into a wax piece too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you know it's it's nature inspired, and I, I you know where I'm a outdoor yeah. photographer, yeah, it just all worked. Yeah, I love um, I love photograms, and I love 
um, the outside line of florals. And that's like a really nice way to hmm. sort of explore that as an art form. Does everybody know what Linda's talking about, the cyanotype? Yeah? Yes. Okay. So, and I'm, uh, I can just quickly chat you guys. There is a woman who actually is a friend of mine. She was the Dean of um, our art school here in Philadelphia at Temple University. Her name is Martha Madigan. And Martha Madigan was very famous for doing large scale photograms um, on sensitized emulsions with cyanotype or other type of photo emulsions of flowers. Really, yep. really, really awesome of flowers. And so what you get there is you get a very defined outside line type shape of a flower, which is completely different than photographing a flower, right? Because you've really compressed it and you've simplified it into a 2D shape, right? So you're really just getting its outside line. It's kind of the unknown, you know, you, you never know what you're gonna come up with. It's, it, it's, no. it's the unknown. Yep. And wait, there's another friend of mine who actually is, uh, goes back to my Canada days. Um, Deb, not when I was in um, your, your, I was in the West, Western Canada, like Victoria, but he's amazing. You guys can look him up on, on Facebook, but he also does a lot of cyanotypes. His name is Dennis Humphrey. So two really, really great artists for you guys to look up um, who both do photogram type floral work. And also, um, I know for sure, Dennis has taken a number of my workshops. He's very interested in, in, in caustics as well. Um, so, you know, I wanted to talk this weekend a little bit about some very simple processes with wax that I feel like sometimes even myself, like I just go too far. Okay, so that's been something that I've been processing on during COVID because I've been, you know, my life has been condensed to like my, you know, my family, my home environment, just what's in front of me. It's been in a way refreshing for me to uh, not have to process so much and to kind of hone into what I, you know, was really important. And um, this winter, I was actually asked to produce some work about horses. And when it came to the horses, I really, they're so beautiful just themselves that I really just couldn't add that much. Like I wanted to wax them and paint them because I wanted them to have an aged look and a textured look, but I couldn't really override them. Like, and that's sorry, no pun intended, but like I couldn't, you know, obscure them or cut them up or, um, you know, cut, put too many stencils on them. Like I just kind of wanted their natural beauty to be there. And I wanted the natural beauty of the wax to be there. So I felt like it was like a simple marriage, but also I wanted to point out that I thought it was really successful. And I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit this weekend as a theme that the, like the less is more, right? And then maybe the more simple applications of the encaustic, the better like the less colors you try to use, the, the less layers, like maybe just just simpler and purer and really trying to figure out that, that marriage between the photo and the wax so that they're just so working well together, right? And you guys have all had these experiences in your lives where something was just working really well and it just felt so natural and you felt so good and comfortable Right. I mean, th these experiences could have been like riding a horse or in a love relationship or, you know, with a child having fun. Like there's these certain things in life where you just know they're going well. And I want us to try to feel that way about the work. And one of the reasons I'm even bringing this up is because I asked you guys that question and I'm going to do screen share for a second. I wanted to go and start the workshop with your answers i recorded your answers and if i don't have somebody's answer you guys can answer right now for me because um sometimes i do better on my homework my personal homework assignments than others <laughs> so um but 
here is what people said, okay, about working with wax and also what they wanted to do this weekend. And so I really wanted to take your, my group of workshop attendees, your feelings and thoughts and concerns into consideration before we start, okay? So Marsha said, I'm most interested in your thought processes while you're creating. I'm fairly new to the plastic process. I can't decide which way to go after applying the wax. Okay, so that's totally legit. That's like a real thing. That's like, it's like decisions, decisions, decisions. So one of the themes of this weekend is definitely going to be um, decision making. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but I had to make a major life decision um, probably like last week. And I literally, I think I processed it and talked about it and processed it and talked about it for like four weeks. It was like kind of a big career thing. And I ended up like not take going, you know, declining the, the offer I had. Um, but it, it was so many levels of deep thought and, um, decision making which which the these things are not to be taken lightly like when you're in the studio making art you're like pushing yourself right you're like make a decision make a decision do something make a decision do something do something right but there's a lot of other aspects to that like what about like doing something and just like waiting you know like what about really slowing down what about like doing something and really just enjoying that one thing that you did for a little while before you do something else okay all right. Um, Bonnie said, I'm going to put my headphones back on because Duncan's grinding metal. So, okay, sorry. <laughs> so just to save you guys. The... Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. So Bonnie said, I have a mental block when it comes to starting and designing a photo in caustic. I have a photo in black and white mounted and stare at it. Where to <laughs> begin? Where do I put the flowers? Where should I include? What stencils? You know, and... Bonnie, you hit the nail on the head. This is the whole, my, my focus of this weekend is decision-making, right? Don't, and, and don't, the reason that you're getting stuck or even using those words stuck is that you're not believing in yourself. You're not believing in your decisions. You're second guessing. Okay. So that would be my reaction to what you wrote. And like, who cares? Like you're you, you need to be happy. You need to love yourself. You need to trust yourself and you need to enjoy your process. So enjoy the decisions that you made, you know, let them go. And then the next day, if you don't like them, change them, change your decisions. Right. Um, yeah. I, I actually watch and I, I'm going to, I'm going to make this part of the, the, the workshop assignment too. Uh, I watched a documentary about um, Dolly Parton last night. Has anybody seen that? I think so. Is anybody a Dolly Parton fan? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say now I am a Dolly Parton fan, like for real, because she is basically like my inner child. Like mm -hmm. she is my inner child. So she literally is a work of art, and her whole thing was art to her, right? So Dolly Parton that we all saw and knew and heard saying and stuff, I was just like an inner vision of her artistic self that she constantly created, right? And she was just constantly trying new outfits, new looks, new styles, new songs, right? And she, she was just a, like a true artist. So, and very, 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 very kind and uplifting and filled with joy. So mm -hmm. I highly recommend watching that documentary. And she talks about decisions too, like, decisions on outfits and decisions on, you know, what to do next with their career and what type of music to sing. So these are things that artists deal with all the time. All right. Bonnie also said um, that she would like to learn more about pulling a subject out of a photo. In other words, how to avoid everything looking flat. I like flow and movement. So um, we could talk a lot about that. I'm also going to talk a lot about what I call the nature of wax. And unfortunately, uh, ladies, wax is flat. <laughs> I mean, it just is flat. And it's, but it's 3D. So I think that we can work on this. I think we can learn tricks 
and um, we could create contrast, right? So we can definitely focus on that. And you guys can consistently um, ask me um, technique tips or and I can try to point them out, right? To help you guys with that, because that's a big deal. And I struggle with it too, because the nature of wax is pretty flat. All right, so we'll talk about that. Uh, more on combining the use of color. Absolutely, I'll try my best and please pipe up and ask me questions. And um, I, again, I'm showing you guys what works for me, but I struggle with all of these things you listed as well, okay? All right, so my questions, this is from Melissa. My, Melissa said, my questions are about the planning stage and thought process as you begin a painting. I'm definitely gonna talk about that, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start in the beginning with you guys. You're gonna help me make all of my decisions. I'm gonna talk to you about why I'm making the decisions I'm making, and then I'm gonna do them in front of you so you can kind of see my thought process. Yeah. And literally, it's almost like steps of like prepping for a cooking recipe or setting up a dark room. It's a fairly typical and I like routine. Like it's helpful for me to follow a routine because there's a way I think we feel more comfortable if we feel confident, right? Mm -hmm. So the C words, comfort, confident, Right, and then this, these things enable us to make those in the moment intuitive decisions, right? Feeling comfortable and being confident, okay? And I'll tell you how I help myself like create that environment. It's almost like creating a safe environment for yourself to be able to thrive, right? And make art, okay? All right. Um, I've talked about areas of quiet and areas of texture. We've watched as these collage, use paper, et cetera. I know some of the things you plan, but what about the how the painting will feel? Very good question. You know, it will be, if it will be soft and ethereal or bold and contrasty before you begin. You have certain questions you ask at that point. Also regarding scraping back, do you plan ahead of time and the placement of choice of colors you'll scrape back into? That's, this is really noisy. Are you guys noticing that? Is this better? Yeah. That, these headphones sound really noisy. Oh, you know what? I can hear the noise. Do you know why there's so much noise on this room? Is that like a part of it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So are you guys all muted? Can everybody mute while we're talking? Because yeah. there's a lot of like background fuzz. Probably just like someone's hair, like literally in their room. Okay. Oh, better. Is that better? Is that did that static go? Oh yeah, that's much better. Did you guys hear the difference? Okay. So now, if you're going to talk to me, just remember you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. I don't need them because of the heater, and because I can hear them better. Okay. But I don't need them. If you don't have them, I can plug this speaker in and yeah. set it up so you're using a high quality microphone yeah. right from here. Is yeah. that okay if I do that? Oh my God, yeah. Okay. All right, we're getting a, a technical upgrade, you guys. Woohoo! We're gonna get a speaker. We just, yay, yay, Tara. Everybody say yay, Tara. Woo! All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> everyone say hi, Tara. Hi, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say something? Tara, introduce yourself while you're there. Oh, hi, I'm Tara. And tell them about what you do. Okay, I am now a brand strategist and marketing expert, but I was a photographer for over a decade and a half, and my favorite photographer ever and artist was Leah McDonald, and I uh, followed her work for years and saw an ad that she was doing a workshop and looked at where she was located and would you believe it it was three hours away so about three years ago i took my first workshop with her and she is just the kindest nicest person her process is absolutely amazing if you ever get the chance to come to her studio it's incredible but what a blessing that she's offering this to all of us on zoom so nice to meet you all 
I'm going to stop share for just a second, if yeah. that's okay. Yeah. I'm put this on here. We're adding a microphone. Hang on, you guys. And everybody knows my student is here too, right? I'm in the studio now. You guys see her?
like by draft paper, I think she's like those gold draft paper over the top, and then I wrap the bubble wrap, right? So even like a you know, this is just like a stock bowl of brown paper. You can put the tissue paper over the surface of the wax, then wrap it with brown paper, and then wrap it with bubble wrap. Right? If you can stick it in a box with peanuts or some other stuffing uh, around the outside of the of the bubble wrap so that it's not touching the front of the box, the back of the box, or the sides of the box, it's pretty good. Then you just ship it. If it's winter time, you have to ship it very quickly. So the freezing cold is worse for the wax pieces than the heat. They're more likely to get damaged. Um, freezing in freezing temperatures than they are in super hot temperatures. Um, mostly because when they're being shipped in the heat, they're not hopefully exposed to sunlight and heat at the same time. So even though like a truck might be hot, it's hopefully not going to be full sun. Um, but the cold is unavoidable. And what happens when the wax gets cold is it tightens and tricks and cracks right so what happens when it's warm is it's expanded okay so for a wax piece to slightly expand in the heat it's okay because it'll cool and set back to where it was the problems really arise when it's um freezing and it contracts and cracks okay so does, was that helpful deb Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I do like three layers. I do something over the piece. I do a wrap around with a paper, right? And then I do uh, a bubble wrap. And then I do a, okay. and a float box. So as long as it's not, you know, as long as there's something, um, if you wanted to add one more layer, you could add another layer of cardboard on top of the bubble wrap um, and then stick it in the box. Okay. And for flat for paper pieces, um, actually, this is kind of interesting too. Like I, I'm gonna talk about this in a few minutes. So for paper, for works on paper, um, I'm gonna do a works on paper and works on panel this weekend. And you know, for those of you who know me, you know I like to do both. I don't know why this has never been opened and I don't know why it's on my shelf today that I found it, but this is a photo drying book, right? And it's a blotter book. So we used to use these in the dark room, but if you're doing works on paper, you can just stick them in here and see how this is like my, right? This is like right in my alley. It's got two waxy paper here. Just put it in here. It keeps them flat. They'll dry in here. Um, and then it's also a good storage place for works on paper. And then you could, um, if you're selling them, you could just make a folio out of two pieces of cardboard, stick it in there with a piece of wax paper. And you can even, you know, use your cut right piece of wax paper, which I just had here someplace. Oh, yeah, you can use this. You can just, you know, you can use this. And I think they make this in a jumbo size. Lay it around, wrap it around the wax piece, put it inside the cardboard, and then you can stick it in an envelope to ship it. Okay. So always the wax non-stick something on the surface and then wrap it inside cardboard or in cardboard and ship it. Okay. If you don't want to spend the money on a photo drying blotter book, you could buy a newsprint pad, which is like the same thing. Newsprint is super, super kind to wax pieces. And um, I usually have like a big newsprint pad and when I'm working on paper, I just stick my piece in there. It helps dry them and keep them flat and safe, right? From dust or dirt or falling on the floor or whatever, okay? All right, so those are two little helpful, helpful tips. Um, any questions on shipping art or caring for acoustic pieces? I mean, and technically your pieces should be climate controlled. Um, my studio is and I don't know, you know, we could, you guys can email me questions about your studio or your art storage. Um, technically, all art should be stored vertically, not flat, right? So that means that all your artworks, and I actually finally, I, can, uh, 
I actually, here, I can show you. Well, maybe I'll just take a picture. I'll email to you. But I finally did um, get vertical, ver proper vertical storage in here. So that means your pieces should be standing up, right? And caustics and art should not be stacked flat on top of each other. They should be standing vertically. And you can actually even just take a cardboard box, flip it on side, and put the art in there. Or you can take, make, you know, have someone build a rack. You could also take a shelf and flip it on its side, right? So if you have like a, a book, you could flip it on its side. If you, so art should be stored vertically. Okay, any questions on that? All right. Um, Deb, we will definitely try to talk about making. Uh, creating pleasing compositions. And I think that the composition comes in the very beginning. I think that the composition is part of your editing responsibility. And I think picking good photos with good pleasing compositions is the best place to start that process. Okay. If you're collaging, I think it's the same that you're really, really making and focusing on taking and creating good compositions. And the only way to really get good or know that it's good is to make a ton of them and pick the best one, right? So you have to really have that inside relationship with yourself and your work where you're able to edit. And if anybody wants help editing photos, you can always reach out to me. You can send me a bunch. I can help you edit what photos I think are the best for wax and what photos might be the best for your composition ideas. Right? Um, studying composition, studying other people's art and why you like it, what you like about it, what you like about, about what's in it, where those things are, and making notes. Maybe you would start like a journal list about what kind of composition you like and why you like them. Okay? So those are my right off the off the off the off the cuff suggestions on that. All right, Nancy is at home, but she said one of the things. She's going to watch the recording, actually. She said, one of the things that I want to know uh, is how much work in progress do you have? Oh, how much work in progress? So I have a ton of work in progress. And actually, I was going to show you guys this, but I worked on a painting for, I think, most of COVID, or the beginning of COVID, for almost three months, and I hate it. And I seem to remember there were moments that it was good, but now it's terrible. So the one thing I can say about that is that the torch and the heat could possibly take you back to that happy place, right? But you need to be able to discern that you're at a bad spot, you're in a terrible place with it, and that you're willing to take the risk and go back, right? You might not get back to where you like it, but at least you're going to get rid of what you don't like. <laughs> so I have a stack, you guys. I would say over here. And they all need to go back, right? But I don't make those decisions lightly. Um, and I usually give those pieces a lot of time and time with me for me to process before I officially say there that I can't fix you. I can't be in this relationship with you anymore. And you're out. We're going back to scrap line. Okay. I don't make these decisions impulsively or quickly because I'm too moody. Right? So I have to be making these decisions when I know that I'm balanced and like, you know, on it. Does that make sense? Does everybody know when they're on it and they're not on it? So I, right. So I mean, I definitely have a very serious relationship with myself. I've been an artist my whole life. So I definitely know when A, I'm painting well, right? And then B, I'm on it. So that means that I'm making decisions that are not just because, you know, I had a bad experience with somebody or this person mad at me or I owe somebody money, right? So there's all these other factors in our lives that affect us. All right. Um, it seems like I have quite a bit that I get to a certain point and then I either lose interest or don't know how to take it to the next level. Yeah, I, I have that too. I have that too all the time. And one of the problems with my, um, my career is probably that, you know, commercially is that I don't produce enough, which is ironic because I work all the time. So basically what that's saying is that I'm very picky about what I consider being done and that encaustics are really hard. Okay, so 
So Shannon and us really said I would like more experience with when to go and when to stop. And I saw on your out that I saw on your outline. Also with the layering and probably back with doing portraits, I've never used gesso. Okay, so we'll talk about gesso. We're not gonna do any portraits. Um, and definitely everybody, everybody that uses encaustic, I think it is is thinking about that question. <laughs> when to go, when to stop, and what, like, what, what to do next, right? When you get to those certain points, what to do next. And I hate to say it, but sometimes you just have to go, try, you just have to trash it. You just have to trash it. I'm going to just make it a blanket statement that it's okay, right? And sometimes you can be really overjoyed when you just get, like, you know you're, you're done, and you take the to go back. And sometimes you find some really cool stuff in the going back, right? Okay. So I'm ready to move forward and start actually working on some work. Um, any questions about anything you said? I'm glad that I did the question. Um, I think I have a pretty good sense of what everybody is struggling with and really wants to learn. And I hope um, I hope I deliver the goods. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody have anything they want to say? And you guys can chat me. Everybody knows how to use the chat function. Does anybody need any assistance with their actual Zoom? And we have like a Zoom expert here with us today. So is everybody cool? good? Thumbs up? Okay. Thumbs up. But you can see my thumb. All right. So time of the tone is 10 to 1. So let's put in some, uh, let's put in some serious painting time. All right. So just to go over, I'm going to switch. Uh, now, wait, Tara, they can minimize their video or turn their videos off. Wait, let me see. Now, they can leave it alone. I'll just make it so your pen so that they're seeing just yours. So each one. Do you guys be? want? So, I, do you guys want both of these screens open, or would you prefer just this this screen on this? I think. Do you guys like both screens where you can see this and me? I think this is good. Are you guys okay with this? Yeah? Okay. Does anybody want to say anything? No? If you want to say something, you can unmute yourself. You guys are good? Okay. So this is the big question of the day, right? Is I um I've been photographing flowers. Or I'm going to show you everything I have. And you guys are familiar, hopefully, with my editing process, right? So you guys know this is all new floral work for me. Um, so uh, uh, you know a couple of things about me. One is that I like to work on more, more than one piece at a time. The other is that I like to see the same photo more than one time. So it kind of helps me um, make sure that I'm, I'm covering all my bases and really pushing myself to get to know an image and explore all the possibilities that I can with that image. I also like to use panels of different sizes, right? So this is a new size for me. Um, this is a six by 12. And I'm very excited about it. One of the things that I like too about this is um, for those of you that follow my Instagram, um, I made a puzzle piece this year and that was pretty big for me. But what I like to think about is maybe splitting the photo, right? So that the, so that the final piece could actually be in two separate, on two separate planes, right? So one photo, on two panels that could possibly come apart, right? Or that I could possibly even um, flip, right? Especially because if we're talking about abstraction, you can alter the composition, right? So if you all alter the position um, from the top, you know, the top or the rotation, you're totally uh, changing the composition. Okay, so. This is a possibility for, for this weekend. Um, 
squares are nice, right? So a square, square panel is nice. I'm not going to do any um, alternative services this weekend, but you can think about alternative services being um, dye-on or cardboard um, or another material like that. Let me show you guys. This is a little bit of a thinner, a thinner type of wood. So this is something that my husband brought home from from work, um, and I can I think it's I think it's they call it chipboard, but this is like awesome. So he cut this for me, but like I can start to think about taking a photo and breaking it up onto smaller pieces and then putting it back together. So that's what I did with this course piece um, that I did is I made the photo um, like 30 by 40 and then I laid these pieces of wood on the photo, cut around them and glued each one. I call it a puzzle piece. So it's just something new that I've been thinking about as far as abstraction goes is, you know, and then painting each one individually. So it's just like another way that for me that I've come up with to um, play around. So maybe I'll do one of these this weekend. I'm gonna do some paper pieces. I'm gonna do these two. I don't know how much we'll actually get done in the workshop, but just you can see me kind of like setting up. Okay, so these, like I kind of give myself two or three or four possibilities with the same photo. All right, so this is the big question for you guys is I'm gonna give you a choice of photo. So I, I narrowed it down to two. So this is one choice. This is choice number one, right? And um, it's a tabletop photo. So there is a vase here. There's flowers on the table. This was shot outside. Um, and I have just really, really, really been enjoying playing with flowers, setting flowers up, um, using my natural environment, like. Um, I even like had a tree fall down last summer and I used the fallen down tree and put flowers in it and like a little tabletop like next to it. So like, I like to kind of create um, a stack effect, right? So that, so that the flowers are on different planes. Okay, so that not like Linda was talking about where it's like a, when you're doing a cyanotype, right, which they're flat and it's more like they it's more like a stencil, right? Because it's very 2D. I really like to work 3D, which means that this one, this is coming very forward and these are going back. And then I add it in Photoshop this lightly. Okay, so this is option number one. And I hope you pick this. Well, I'm not gonna say what I did. Right. But okay. This is the same, this is it again, right? This is option one. So here we go. And this is two. Okay. So this is a like I would say a simpler, more just strictly floral. And the reason I say that is because it doesn't have a tabletop, right? And it doesn't have a huge light flare in it. So it's a little bit more simplistic, maybe a I'm not gonna say, do I say anything I'm gonna do? Okay, so which one, you guys? One or two? You guys can chat me. What is the best type of paper for printing on this? Yes, I will answer that question in the chat. Uh, one or two, you guys. Let's go, Marsha, one or two. Oh, come on, <laughs> someone pick. I like two. Oh, wait, we have two. I like two. Linda said one. I like them. I both. like one. I like one. You like one? Oh my yeah. gosh, we're gonna be lit. Oh. <laughs> I need to get breaker. I can work on both of them. Do you want me just to work on both of them or is that gonna be too distracting? No. It's work on good. one. <laughs> work on one. All right. <laughs> so either one. Either one. Okay. Uh, let me see what I have. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you is this was kind of funny too, just on a sidebar. 
So, can you guys see me? So, I flip the photo. So, sometimes I think about scale too, and I like I like to make big work. So, I flip the photo, and I'm gonna put it back together. And can anybody see why I might want to do that? Because I like what? What I like the center. I like the arch. Yeah, I like the arch. Now, what could be really cool is that I was future thinking is that this could become an arch, almost like a gazebo, and then what could I put down here? Ah. A figure, right? So I could mm -hmm. combine. So in the last two years, my imagery has gotten like more complex in terms of more like digital illustration, probably because of all the good CGI I'm seeing on TV. But I, now I'm thinking like this could be a, 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 a gazebo, you know, like an archway, and then I can have a woman or a figure down here. If I was working cool. on a large, like on a large scale panel, you know, like something like this, right? You guys see that? So these can go here. These can go here at the top, right? And then, then something else can go down there, right? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's just something like a little sidebar, but that is sort of some, some stuff that I think about. And I think that if I was trying to juggle too many images at one time, I wouldn't see the possibilities within this image. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I really try to narrow myself down into like two or three original photos to work with. And then I really like to think about it. How many things can I do with those couple of pictures, like one or two pictures? Like, can I turn it upside down? Can I double it or triple it? Can I cut it in half and put it together the wrong way? Can I puzzle it, right? Can I delete part of it? Can I stand part of it out, right? So it, it's something that I have taught myself to do and encourage myself to do is like paint the same picture over and over and really explore all the things that you can do with one at a time. Okay. So I'm going to try to do two. I also, I like to play with scale. And um, okay, so as far as photo paper goes, as far as photo paper goes, I am strict on one paper. I only use one paper because again, encaustic for me is a lot of elements and uncontrollable uh, materials that I'm using. So that's one of the ways that I try to stay organized is I use one Photoshop filter program, which is called Alien Skin, and I use one um, paper type, right? So I use my filter that I use in Photoshop is called Alien Skin, and my photo paper that I use is Common Mule, and I either use the rice paper, rice paper, or the William Turner. I have a question, Leah, since you're talking about rice paper. I bought some and I'm using some and I really like the prints. I mounted them and put um, a couple of coats of um, acrylic, uh, I'm sorry, a couple of dozen of encaustic medium on top and they burned really easily with my torch. They, I, they actually turned brown. Yeah. So, is you, that okay? You didn't like that? <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I guess in a way, it's just like, you know, what, like now you did it, right? So, learn yeah. experience, experience was had, right? Yeah. So, what you could do, why were you using, why were you using the torch? To get it to dry quicker? I'm sorry, I, I, what was your question? Why were you using the torch? Well, in this weather, even in winter, spring, summer, fall, all of it, um, it's really humid. And as soon as I lay the wax down, I have a million tiny pinhead bubbles, like orange skin. Uh -huh. 
And the only way I can get rid of those is to try to have, take my torch and actually blow them apart and make it smooth again. Okay, so I have a suggestion on that. I think I figured that out for somebody else of why that was happening. And it had to do with the heat of the wax. So if you, okay. if you make the wax a little bit hotter, I think that that will get rid of the air bubbles. Huh. So one, okay. of, one of the things I've been noticing about my students' work as I've been teaching them on Zoom is that many people do not have the wax with the right consistency before they start painting. So two things that I see happening is one, that they're working with a brush that's not even liquid. Like the wax is like gummy on the brush. Again, okay. nothing for you, okay? So you don't want that. And the other thing is that if the wax is um, not quite hot enough, it okay. will allow those bubbles to happen. Hmm. So I'm thinking yeah. more heat. One of the things that you can do to make more heat is also preheat your surface or you put the wax on it. So you take yeah. the sun, probably not a torch unless you want it to turn brown, yeah. and heat, preheat the panel before you start brushing. And that should mm -hmm. eliminate, and, and that would make perfect sense too in your situation where you have a lot of humidity, heat will dissolve humidity, so heat will win, like rock, paper, scissors, yeah. heat will win. And if you heat the, you'll kind of decrease the humidity that specific area and then quickly brush the wax. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So this is something that I really, this is like a fun thing for me in the studio um, that I really enjoy doing is once I kind of have my prints, I get my panels that I have and I kind of do like a sorting, like I, like, you know, play, like deck of cards. I lay them out and I sort of just pick my possibilities, right? So I have these two big guys here. I have this big guy. I have this one. I have this one. Okay, so I have a lot of possibilities. So one of the things I think about too is I think about maybe a small print going on a bigger panel and then a bigger print going on a smaller print panel, right? So just like those are just possible areas. I also talked about taking these little boards and breaking the prints up, right? I also talked about using these three panels and also breaking up a photo, right? Do you see how I'm sort of already thinking about how to dis disrupt or abstract what I have, right? Now, I have no idea at this point which one of these ideas is going to be the most successful or if any of them are going to be successful. I completely just abandoned that concept and I'm just in it to win it, right? I'm just like in it. I don't know. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go. The other thing I can do is I like to cut with different sources. So now, um, and you can tell that I like cutting because the, the truth be known, when I organized the studio, I figured out that I had a lot of scissors. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, and this, you know, if you, you might think I'm crazy, but I've been an art teacher for a long time, and I always tell everybody that your tools are super important. So cutting with a pair of scissors that were made for a six-year-old are going to be completely different than cutting with a pair of scissors, right? But maybe they're fun. Maybe you like them. These scissors still, my friends, they're the worst scissors. They're just horrible. The other thing that you could do to use to cut is of course an exacto knife right so right here i have a number of tools and options of how i can start this project right and i always find this part of the project to be very freeing and i try not to think about this part too long because to me this is sort of like the easy like it's not that it's easy it's just like easier so i'm just going to quickly just make a decision like let's say this one goes here right let's say that i do one of these on here right so i'm just like so i'm just like giving people jobs i'm gonna do i could do like this i could do this like let's see if i get three out of this do you see what i'm doing so i'm just kind of like laying the wood i'm just kind of pairing up these these 
top of, right? So I could do, well, I wish this was like a little bit wider. But look, I could do this too. I could do this, right? So this is how the puzzle, this is how the puzzled idea came as I was kind of like, I could just do, make these little pieces and then put them back together in different shapes. I don't know. Do a split. But then I, oh, I know what I can do. I can always get Duncan to trim with me. Duncan! <laughs> Poor Duncan. I was like, Duncan! Hopefully, you guys all have a Duncan at home. <laughs> He's like, what? Um, I'll do it. Okay, this one. You guys can laugh if I do. What other panels do I have? Oh, and I'm going to do one paper. And oh, I'm going to do what else do I have? I'll do one more paper. I'll do two papers. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right, I have four left. You guys, which one? I have four left. Now, also, this is something else that I do, um, which is prints of photos in two different tones okay so that's not something that you have to do it's just something that i do um but if i use this one i already have a yellow tone to the photos i just have to deal with that i just thought it looked so pretty i can do this bit i can stick with this one though if it's easier you guys want which one do you want and it's sideways but you see how it's kind of still sideways Deb, do you see how this though, I already decided that I like this composition, right? So really picking photos that you're already in love with. And trust me, I was looking at like 50 photos when I picked these two, right? They really stood out to me on the screen. Um, so they became, you know, kind of like my jump off. They became my, my high scorers, right? So I don't like to print anything or have anything in my studio that, is, that I don't think is going to make it. Right? Does anybody have a preference, warm tone or cold tone? No, okay. Wait, let me just make sure I get a warm tone. I'll do, oh, they're all kind of, I'm gonna do a cold tone. All right, so I think I have my grip. I'm gonna put these three to the side. Um, oh, you know what I do? I'm gonna do this. All right, I'm gonna do this just for fun. I'm gonna do this because I know I can. I'm going to determine to make this work now. Good stuff. One more. All right. All right. That's, oh, that's it. Okay. See, before I get, I'm not that good at that. All right. So I'm going to do this. It's going to be great. I'm going to do this. All right, so this is going to be paper and that's going to be paper. So those are going to go over there. All right, so this one's going to go on here. And I use PVA glue. Um, I think I'm going to, oh yeah, I'm going to use PVA glue. So this one, I know when I go on a bigger, so this is a bigger board than this photo is. So one of the things I can think about is cutting the photo out. So I started doing this with my figurative work, and I think a couple of you have seen me do this. But what I'm looking for when I do this is kind of even forcing myself into what I call a quiet space. <laughs> do you guys remember in like in, when you first started going to school, they made us take nap time? Did anybody have nap time in school? Like where you had to like go lay down on the mat? did so and also i like paper cuts um recently i did an entire class on matisse so i don't know if you guys remember the history of matisse but he got cancer and he was very ill and he couldn't paint so uh, he started doing paper cuts and i actually if you get a chance definitely visit matisse's paper cuts but this is just some fun stuff that i that i just like to do so does everybody see like i just do 
like I go along that outside edge, but I'm like, really just having fun or venting some, you know, stressy energy. I also just sort of like to interact. So with the pieces and um, be kind of playful. So. I could do like a kind of can pair too, right? So these are all just, you know, this paper, like any photo paper, I, you know, I've always just loved paper. So like all of these kind of like deckly edges. And I go, I use the photo as a guide. So I like to look at the outside edges of what I photograph, right? Because I, I made that photo, right? I set these flowers up, I bought them, I picked them, I arranged them, I moved my camera, you know, to get this picture. So this is important to me, right? Um, and now I'm sort of just interacting with it. All right, so now to Melissa's thing, like I might actually intentionally burn this photo. So this is my torch, right? So I like like burned edges, so I might even actually intentionally, you know, kind of like right, burn it a little bit, right? In the just to kind of keep these, you know, sort of organic things. You have to remember, like I was kind of a wild child in the dark room, so I like to kind of like over, you know, overexpose stuff. Um, Leave up in chemicals too long, flip the chemicals. Okay, so here's here's what I have now, right? And what I like is that I have some empty space, right? So I made something that's a little bit smaller than my panel. And because I like to use the gesso and burn it, um, I, I, can, I know that I can make this interesting and I'm gonna leave it open so that I can play with it, okay? So this is a great way to begin sort of an abstraction. Now I have to make that serious decision, right? So, you know, besides all the cutting decisions, I just made very quickly and rapidly by intuition and just sort of fun, like it was just something fun I could do. I was also following the lines of the photo. Now I need to decide, is it going on the top or the bottom? Okay, so that's my big decision, top or bottom. So one of the ways that I make this decision is I ask myself with my acoustic knowledge where I see the painting. So I always think that I, I don't know always, right, but what if I go here, what am I gonna have to do? What are my options? Like, I don't, I mean, yeah, I could, this is like a table. I could go table and I could make the base longer, but I feel like that's not really what I want. So I think I'm gonna go here because then my flowers can be growing, right? So I'm kind of going on like this. This is lighter. Also, I may be more interested in the sky than I am with the ground, okay? Does that make sense? So I'm making a decision on where I see the most opportunity and uh, space space for fun, literally space for fun, okay? So if I go here, I could go darker and this could be like, this could be cascading. Does anybody have a preference? I mean, I'm happy to do either. I, and honestly, if I really, really wanted to know, I could would have to make two pieces. I mean, I and honest and seven and wait what? Oh, and I could and then I also have this. <laughs> so right there's a lot of choices, and then I flipped it on you guys. I know though that I already really like a lot of the things happening in this piece, especially this like outside edge. Really love that. Can everybody see how pretty that is? Right really pretty and what is so ironic and this is what i love about my work is that because and photography because this is blurry this is actually the tabletop but what did it turn into now it looks like a flower right 
So this is what I love, and this makes perfect sense. Even though this is upside down, I actually really like it upside down. So, but these are important decisions. I'm gonna glue it here, and then I can decide later which way it's gonna go. How's that? All right, so I'm gonna use my PVA glue, and I'm going to do this fairly quickly. And I hope this isn't boring, but um, if you guys want to talk or ask questions while I'm doing that, go for it. That was like a lot of techniques I just threw out at you very quickly. So do you want me to review the techniques I just did? One was free cutting, right? And I mentioned, who did I mention? Who's my inspiration for free cutting? Paper cut. Mateen? Paper cut. Okay, so 
once I kind of learned that about myself and I realized that, that tells me that I know that this this is my arch right here in my photo. This is where I, this is the most beautiful part of the photo. Can you guys mm -hmm. see the arch? Mm -hmm. I can actually draw, I don't mind. I can actually, right? And I see it's like this. It's the connection of these guys. You see them like this, mm -hmm. right? This semicircle. Okay. So I could go, this isn't big enough to do that, but I am deaf. I think I could split the arch. So I could go here, but then I'm going to lose this guy. So I could go try to reach that guy to here and here. Okay. So one of two things I can do now is I can just literally lay these panels down and tug, right? So that's mm -hmm. pretty bold, but I can, right? The other thing I could do is I could trace them um, or I could cut cut around them on a board with an exacto knife. Okay, now the next thing I can do, just so I know where I'm gonna go, is these, I'm gonna, now this is kind of neat too. Huh. And this is sort of something that I think about because of, you guys know I owned a book company, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I owned a book company called Bliss Books. And this is actually a really interesting idea because this could be a folio. So wait till you see this. I have to reverse it, but. I mean, this could become a work of art. So I can literally glue this on the wood and then I could wax it and it could be a stand up. Okay. Cool, yeah. Oh my God, so cool. So, right? so I have actually a bunch of these. I was really into making these stand ups. So it could be a stand up. Isn't that beautiful? Right? And I could put like book cloth or I could put paintings on the back. Right? I could seam them here with a tiny little hinge or just some really nice um, book tape, right? And then it could stand up. That just gave me chills because actually I'm making a bunch of folios for somebody right now. Right? Isn't that cool. beautiful? And then it would be a 3D work of art like this. Okay? So it'd be like this or like this. And actually, it works out really well. You know what happens too when I split the photo is that this from far away, this looks like a table with its own still life. Okay. And this looks like a table. It looks like two tables and mm -hmm. two separate tables. But I'm going to tear it. Do you guys want me to make the folio? Or are you just going to go with the idea? Go ahead, make the folio. <laughs> All right. So, what I'm going to do if I make the folio is I'm going to leave the paper attached here. I'm not going to tear it because that's going to help me keep it all together. Um, and I'll find the, I mean, and even for now, let's just say for argument's sake, um, underneath my laptop here, I have an entire box. I collect masking tapes. And so there's like grip tape or cloth tape, any type of cloth tape would be sufficient for this job. And so basically you're just going to put half of it, half of it here. and I'm I don't know where my folios are. I have a bunch of them though. I'll make sure I show you my folios. Um, I have really cute ones. What I used to do is buy even just little empty book, empty book pages and glue them closed and then put photos on them. So I'm just pressing the masking tape onto here. Cool. Yep. And I'm just going to do one more piece. So I have this side, right? So now it looks like a little book. How cute is that? Okay, hold on. Such a great idea. Oh my God. Stand, yeah, and stand up art. I mean, sometimes we just get tired as artists, as artists always having to have like a flat piece of artwork that has to go into a frame and then nobody has wall space, you know, like what about making something? Um, yeah, and I make wax books too, but this is really, this is so, so cool. I'm glad this, and you know, this just totally accidentally came up, but I'm super excited about it. All right, so I'm folding. This is just really nice black cloth tape. And I'm just going to turn the edge here and it's going to hold my folio together. So it's a little bit harder at the top because I've got this. I'm just going to tear this guy off. I'm just going to peel this back and trim it. Okay. And then you guys could, we can wax. I mean, then we can wax these covers, right? We could do anything we want to this. We could put paper on them, right? And then now, oh, I didn't glue it yet. 
And then That's so cool. Technically, yeah. And then that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you guys can see my table job, right? I'm just going to go ahead and put the blue on this side. So again, like Deb, Deb, this is goes back to your decision. Uh, or someone asked me, like, how do you abstract it? And I think once you make, you know, make take the photo, first of all, once you flip a photo into black and white, you guys, you're you're abstract, right? Everybody knows that because black and white is not how we see the world. So anything that's black and white is it, automatically abstract. And then if you cut it, tear it, you know, take out some of the original content, you're also abstract. So these are very mild forms of abstraction, but so what? It's still, you know, technically abstraction. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. I think I'm like, I'm I, you know, I don't know why it took me so long in my life to like totally commit myself to floral work, but I, I'm like really happy. Up you know, there was a long time where I felt like if I just did floral work, it like wasn't important enough. And I guess now at this stage of life, I just don't care about what's important. I just want to do what mm -hmm. makes me ha happy. Exactly. Right? So this really, I I'm just literally have chills at like how like pretty this is and how much I love this. The sidebar. <laughs> and look, I even love those little black dots I put in there. I'm like, oh, they're so cute. And I love this ripple tear that we got by accident. And this is a super paper, you guys. This is like the bomb of all papers. This is the William Turner. And like, what I like about it is how only like ethereal it is and how like, it just tears so nicely and it's just like beautiful. Everything about this paper is beautiful. So this is the William Turner uh, Quad 88. And I really love my little black uh, cloth tape vine. Okay. And it's flat on the bottom, so I'm going to have to cut this guy off because I need flat at the bottom, right? So unfortunately, these guys got to go. Bye. All right, and I'm going to trim that with a razor blade uh, so it stands up nice. Here we go. Here we yeah. Very cool. All right, so we now have to do this right over here, right? And we're going to do So cool. That's so 
one of the things, so now we get to look at it too, right? All of these parts, they can go back together, right? Or they can, or maybe as we're painting them, like we can decide that maybe we like, like flip one, like look, I just flipped, you did, just flip that one. And then also when you hang it, when it's done, you could also extend it, right? Because we like that, that arch. So we could also, you know, you could decide to hang it like that. So this is slightly inspired also. Trust me guys, I'm not that smart. I just look at art all the time. And this is actually inspired by a woman whose name is Jerry Eisberg, who I actually um, showed with at Gallery PMG in Woodstock, New York. And she was an acoustic photographer who used rice paper. And she would um, flip the image vertically and then hang it. It was so beautiful. She could hang it um, from, on a magnet bar. So it never was mounted. It was never pressed against uh, you know, a board or a mat or anything. It was always free to be free to be and hung freely with magnets on a little bar. Isn't that so cool? So I did not uh, make this I am not the genius, and people have been dividing up and puzzling or okay, so here I have a little bit too much PVA glue. So look, I'm just gonna do like a little fancy trick here and I'm gonna actually like put these two together. You guys see what I'm doing? So rather than waste the glue, I can stand the piece. And honestly, like this could be cool, like a two-sided, oh god, I know I can make uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh, we're losing it. Okay. Whew. That was cool. Um, I do want to do what I was going to talk to you guys about too this weekend is sort of, I've, I've now allowed myself to do that freedom with the paperwork too. And that is that I feel all wax paper pieces can be glued after the fact. Okay, so make definitely a note of that. So if you don't feel like doing this, all of this, you know, gluing preppy work stuff, you could work on paper and glue after the fact, right? So one of the benefits of doing that is if you work in a multiple or a series, you could get, um, you could do three or four on paper and then pick your favorite one, then you can do it. So let's talk for a second about how beautiful this is because there's something happening here. I don't know if you can see it, but hopefully you can. So the rice paper with the glue on it gets a little bit like a sharpe, right? The doggy, and gets it will wrinkle. You guys see that? So yeah. right down here I have extra paper so I could intentionally wrinkle it. Right? You guys see that? Hmm. Yep. So that's pretty beautiful. You see what I just did? I like that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it, it looks like there's like a threat. This now looks like a threat. And so it totally just happens, right? Like here I can pitch it. Did you guys I'll do it again if you want, but that's pretty cool. That's cool. I like the wrinkles. Yeah, and I'm gonna leave that thread there. All right. Also, um, you can, if you want, at any time, you, I could have left the white on the edge. I could have also gone, because this is a nice two-inch panel, I could have gone over the edge, right? So technically, I could go back, you see what I'm saying, if I wanted to, um, and go over the edge, right? So you can take the panel over the edge, you can take the image over the edge. So now I really must have pushed, but I forgot about this guy. It's okay. Right. So I think we just have one more and then we can start painting with black. Um, so hang in there. I hope this isn't boring. I'm sorry for this. And again, like I've got too much PVA glue here. So 
So I'm going to just, I'm just going to, and this is just a foam brush. I buy these like, you know, at Michael's, you know, whatever you can buy at craft stores is less expensive. Um, and so anyway, while we're, while we're doing this, does anybody have any questions about where to purchase art supplies or arts, any questions about art supplies? You guys know, everybody knows about fine art store, which is definitely like my favorite. All right, so let's see if we can wrinkle it again. So I'm gonna like, per oh, so so that's a big wrinkle. Do you guys see that? That's a, do you see that? But I could go with it. So if I do the outside corners first, this is the rice paper, right? I don't think any of the other papers will wrinkle like this. But this just reminds me of like working with dresses, right? And lace and stuff. So I'm just gonna wrinkle it, right? So this is a new patch we call this the BMX model wrinkle effect. However, this is just unfortunately or unfortunately how my brain works. You know, it's like, well, what else can I do? <laughs> right? I'm always like, what you know, what what else? And I really, oh my god, love with this. I am. Um, you know, like to be very involved with my hair, with my hands in the work. So I really like to use, you know, my fingers. I mean, even now you can see I'm making, you know, a little by rubbing it, I'm and getting glue on it. I'm lifting the emulsion a little bit, and I'm getting kind of this nice, like cracky, lacy work. Oh, that is beautiful. All right, so here are these things. Oh, and look, that one lined up. This one kind of lines up with that. So again, remember, I can put it back together correctly. Or incorrect. Okay, so that's that. All right. So last one, last one. Now, one of the reasons that I started to work this way too, you guys, I have to tell you, is it's sort of what I call tricking myself, right? Because I think sometimes when you've been making art like as long as I have, you kind of get tired of your own like mistake mistakes or you want to push yourself, you know, to look at things a new way, right? So this is one of the new ways. It also slows me down a little bit because I personally do everything like too fast. So, and sometimes I get too intense about stuff that I'm actually like missing the view, right? So if you're going too fast, and Bonnie, you'll love this, but like my trainer has this new saying that she's always telling me that I'm, I'm rushing the, I'm rushing the horses. <laughs> she's like, you need to stop rushing the horse, and you need to slow the momentum down and get it together, like get it together. <laughs> so you'll appreciate that one. All right, so I'm gonna do minor wrinkles here. Um, but yeah, you really would have to be on a rice paper. So this is 90 GSM in order to get this, get this paper to be this bendy for you. But like, I'm sorry, but that is just like so great. And here we are, like I would probably never pick this simple of a composition personally, but now that I see it, I just am like really love it, right? I'm just like, oh my God, that's so sweet. Right, and it could be also talking about composition, Deb. You can really look at it like, is it good like this? Is it good like this? Is it good like this? I would say no, it's not good like that. But, uh, but again, you're just, and I definitely that's kind of funny actually. <laughs> you know, again, you're just really exercising your brain, and your brain, you guys, is a muscle, and it needs a lot of exercise. I don't know, but you guys with my brain is oh and oh yeah, and it's fun to play. All right, so here it is back together. And I do, can you guys see it? I do. That way, and remember, it's actually like this, right? Um, if you're missing the bottom. Okay. All right, last one. So now we have, we're, now we have three, we're gonna have four, and who knows if we'll get all of 
be done in my but this is fine. I guys still having fun and you want to sorry. I answer. Okay, so I move this guy over here. And it'll be good too because we will have these guys, we'll do the paper ones first. So these guys will have a little bit of time to draw. All right. So I'm gonna go, I'm upside down. So I know that this is like my star, right? This is my, this is it. So the way that I crop the star is pretty important. So right here, I could crop the star this way where it's gonna have white on it, or I could crop, but this is I think my favorite part. So I can even take like a piece of charcoal or something just to show you guys like, this is my favorite part of the photo, right? You got right. That's just, that's my favorite part. And then, like technically, like if that's really my favorite part, I could just cut that out as an oval, too, right? Because ovals are so cool and beautiful. Um, but anyway, I'm just gonna kind of point that out to myself. So if that's my favorite part, I'm gonna put the panel like inside that oval, and I'm gonna make this one. Now I'm not gonna do this. Uh, all right, whatever. The only reason I'm tearing this like this carefully, I'm gonna be careful. I don't want to destroy this print. Now, if I could, I actually I don't care. I would be on this. So this is my. If you guys have a cutting mat, or this is my cutting panel. I would be on here. Thank you. 
So now we have to make a decision, right? Do we like it? You guys see where I'm going with this? So I could put this one up here. You guys see where it would be? It would be here or with this on top, or I can do, does anybody have a decision? Any, which one do you like better? And theoretically, I mean, I could do both if I had an extra print. I mean, it's kind of neat. And two, even having like that window effect, right? And the two, and these two like could be moved around, right? So this is definitely, now, uh, Deb, this is where I might come into question on like, what's a good composition? I mean, is it a good composition to have both these like, big flowers in the center. I, I think that this is the way to, uh, it's just too much TMI, right? It's too heavy. So I'm not a big fan of that one there. Although I do like the, this, I do like this, what's happening, especially like this. Any comments, you guys? What do you think? Should I go back to, should I go back to this? This was nice. Less is more. What do you think? I like that. All right, let's go for this. And then what, what becomes fun is like kind of what, what we can do with these, these other spaces, right? All right. Now, technically, um, if you look at somebody like Lorraine Glesner's work, who, um, Deb, I think you're coming to Vermont with us in August, she uses a number of floral resources in her work. So what that means is that she might, um, I'm just gonna use this as an example. This is not a great example, but I'm just gonna use this as an example. She might use another resource for source material. Actually, this might work. So do you guys see what I'm doing here? I, I just, I'm gonna use another resource source material for florals outside of my own photography. I'm gonna take this order from the Ladies Home Journal and I'm gonna add it to my, right? So you could use flowers from a magazine. You could use Xerox copies of flowers. You can use flowers that you take off of um, the internet. Right, so you could appropriate flowers and combine them with your flowers, right? So one of the things that I do is I combine stencils of flowers in my abstract floral paintings, right? So it's kind of just like adding spicy sauce to the mix, something that's not your own photography. Okay, now this is a corner. So what I might do is go corner, corner, so I'm going to do it. Why not? You guys see what I just did? So I added another sort of florally reference into this piece. And what it also does is it gives me something else that I can kind of like have, like, I like to think of them as threads or things that I can kind of like elaborate into the art as I'm working. So they're like little ideas that I have now, um, but they, um can come back into play when i need they're sort of like tools in the toolbox when i need to pull them out and go oh yeah what was i doing well that's kind of cute like the charm there <laughs> that's pretty cute all right so now i'm going to glue it together i don't know about the word but i like word i actually really do like text um in the art all right so i'm going to do these two bottom layers first any questions all right. Um, is anybody going to paint along with me? Are you guys all just like watch watchers? What's up? I'm watching. Anybody painting? I was just going to say, if you're painting, you should, you could have a work on paper and you could have your hot plate set at 200 degrees and two, two, tra two trays, one with wax medium and one for mud, right? Because I am a muddy girl. As a muddy girl. Okay, and I don't ever get too worried about how. I, and again, this is, this is that nice rice paper. 
right, here we go. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually paint a paper piece. Um, and the other, I'm going to gather my materials. So I'm going to just finish doing this. And then we'll let these guys chill out and dry for a little while. Okay, so we made some pretty cool stuff this morning, right? We made that folio. We also wrinkled some paper, right? That was kind of fun. We mm -hmm. paper cut some paper. So if you want to kind of review, review our techniques that we did. Um, we edited some work, right? We did decide to use two different images today, which is fine. They were both, they were actually both from the same photo shoot, um, which is interesting. And they definitely, you know, some days are definitely better than other days with the, with the old photos, you know? Photography itself is hard. You know, styling it, lighting it, picking good ma photographic material. It's a lot. So, it is. <laughs> um, when I do photo shoots with flowers, um, I was in a really nice rhythm over the summer. And basically what I did was I signed up for a weekly, sort of like my COVID treat to myself. I signed mm -hmm. up with a local organic farm and I had flowers delivered here once a week um, in a bucket. I actually, you know, I, I actually did her bouquet was my option, but next year I'm gonna do the bucket because I did do the bucket in the fall and I prefer to get the bucket because when I got her bouquet, I was getting like too much of her decision making and how the flowers were cut and arranged and what flowers went into it. Um, and when she gave me the bucket, she just gave me the flowers in bunches. So then I was kind of pressed to do more of my own arranging. Um, then I would just kind of figure out what flowers she gave me. I didn't, you know, it's funny, like, I didn't love all the flowers she gave me. You know, you think that you love all flowers. And I mean, maybe you, some of you do, but I definitely have favorites for photography. I do not think all, I mean, I personally just don't think all flowers photograph well. Mm -hmm. um, and I also they you know, flowers change, they're change transforming. So they sometimes come unopened. So then you have to wait for them to open. And then mm -hmm. I also like to keep them until they're totally dead. I don't throw them away. So I sometimes continue the photo shoot like for days on end um, as the flowers are changing and I change their arrangement. So there was like one, oh, there's still some flowers here that when they actually like totally dried and deteriorated, I like them a lot more um, mm -hmm. than when they were like lilies for some reason, when they're full bloom, they're so like sharp and loud and like, like in your face, I actually like them when they're half wilted, right? Um, these are the ranunculus, which are definitely one of my favorite flowers, favorite flowers. Am I saying it right? I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Ranunculus, right? Oh my God. All right, so I'm gonna put these little collage embell embellishments on. Um, and uh, let, let me just be clear that when I'm, one of the things I, I think, let me be clear. Let me be clear. One of the things I just realized, no, I'm just this is actually something, not something I just realized, but I don't know that I've ever vocalized it, but it came out again on that Thursday class is that I prefer to paint images that have out of focus elements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just like, I'm gonna have to quote myself on that because it's really true. Like for me, um, if an image is too in focus, the whole image, I don't like it and I can't paint it. So I don't know if it just like speaks of like overwhelm for me or my brain can't process it or I can't take it apart or I can't, I just can't see it, right? If it's too sharp. So that means that I definitely like either being too up close or having like distance as part of the photo, right? So that something's close, something far away, something sharp, something blurry. Okay, so those are sort of new. Uh, they're, they're not new for me. Like I definitely know because I love the view camera, and that was like really part of part of what I loved about the view camera. 
So just really stating that or being super clear about that point. Because people, I feel like, have asked me those questions. Like, Leah, what, what kind of photo makes a good encaustic painting? So guess what? Now I'm going to say, now I'm going to say it. Uh, blurry ones. <laughs> blurry, right? So partially blurry. Because I think that's really what you're going to do with the wax. So you've mm -hmm. already sort of engaged in that action or have started to sort of see that process, you're better off. Like you're you're already like wearing the right outfit. You know what I mean? And look, so I'm just gonna draw because I love I love this kind of idea of this like dancing garland, right? So I'm just gonna kind of draw it. And then I could also this is something I like to do too, is maybe just start to just sort of feel, you know, this is just a, a rough piece of, um, this isn't charcoal, this is like pencil lead, but I'm just sort of getting to know, like I did with the scissors, the shapes, right? Just sort of the outside line shape of these flowers and what I'm kind of liking about this picture, right? And you can see the shape that I like is definitely what? It's definitely that, that archy, that arch, mm -hmm. right? That, that half a circle circle, right, circle, you can start to see sort of the circles. And then where, you know, circles up here. Okay. All right, so let's get some painting in. So that was fun, I kind of did some little. this one, I'm going to move them away. Uh, these I probably will wash in the sink later. These little scrappy scraps keep on the back. Oh, except for that word charm. Oh, wait, look at that. That's funny. That's charm and super charm. Wow. Ladies, we're supposed to be charming and super charming. No, no, no. <laughs> you can do it. That's what the journal's telling us. You need charm. <laughs> Okay, you guys ready to paint some? Yes. So we're going to work on this one and this one. And we're going to do What kind of paper is that? I'm going to do two papers. One is, uh, this is the William Turner, the whiter one. Did you, it, it is quite a bit whiter too. Did you guys notice that? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I used to give these, I used to give my photo and view camera photo students these long lectures about paper white, paper brightness. You know, because it is a big deal. Like when you're putting a black and white, when you're putting black and white, you really only have white black and white right so you do have all the shades of gray but like your undertone or your white matters if it's off white bright white these are all things that are important so every paper like darkroom photo paper had a different uh value for white right so every single paper had a different value so same with the inkjet papers right so when they're whiter that just means they have more bleach in them okay um, and it just has to do with what they're making the paper out of. So definitely the right paper is different than the William Turner paper. Okay. So when I'm preparing to work on paper pieces, the first thing I think about is outside edge. Right? And so this one I did. And sometimes it has to do with things that I've done in my upstairs studio, which is where I print. Um, this one is pretty nicely centered and has, you know, a nice border and the size I made it is nice and the white is pretty. So I can, I'm definitely going to leave that white edge. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of the top off because I can tell that it's not quite even. So uh, this is an inch and a quarter. 
this is an inch and three quarters. This is an inch and a half. Okay. Uh, and this is three inches. So let's just say I'm not going to be too fussy about it, but I'm definitely going to take that this down to an inch and a half. Just so it's not so top heavy. All right. So also, I, I need to kind of make some decisions about, well, I can make a couple decisions here. One is I can mask this image, which means I can take masking tape and go around the outside edge and then make it a, a rectangle. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing I could do is I could, what I call, get rid, bleed, bleed the image. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't mean bleed, like tear this off and fill the frame. I mean, like literally bleed. So what I would do to bleed was, would, would be like, what I mean by that, I would destroy the edges of the picture. Okay, so how I do that is a combination of gesso and sandpaper. So I have decided now that sandpaper is goes, that my love for using sandpaper and doing things with sandpaper goes back to um, darkroom photography with burning and dodging, right? So if I was in the darkroom and I was printing this picture and I didn't want there to be a hard rectangle, I would have taken away the easel with the frame and then I would have taken my hand while I was printing and I would have gone like this over the edges of the print or like this over the, and I would just not let those get exposed, right? So since they're printed here and I didn't make those changes to this image in Photoshop of getting rid of the rectangle, I'm gonna do it manually. So what I'm talking about is getting rid of the vertical and basically I'm sanding down this outside edge, okay? So now I can leave this image on this white rectangle, right? But I'm gonna take the picture outside of this rectangular frame, right? So this is where I think about burning and dodging, but I also think about sort of it's almost like blindly painting. So I'm I'm just sort of like lifting the image, going with the flow of the flowers, like in that arch, right? And thinking about, you know, taking away this hard line. Okay. The other thing I could do, so that kind of like gives me some texture. It's starting to take away, I want to take away any of these like sharp, recognizable points. Right, so I'm just kind of trying to break, literally just break this rectangular line down. Okay, so my goal, my goal in my head is very specific. What it actually looks like, I cannot control. Is everybody clear on that? So I'm clear on my goal, and I'm just using a variation of techniques to achieve that goal. My goal is to get rid of the rectangle. Okay. I don't know exactly how it's gonna look. That kind of, does that make sense? Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my encaustic gesso. I have a couple of brushes. So this is the encaustic gesso. Um, the reason that I use the encaustic gesso is that I know that it's safe to put encaustic over this, okay? Um, I also, um, you know, I, my background in photography has given me many years of experience, like with Marshall's oil paints, with watercoloring on photos, drawing on photos, collaging photos. I mean, there's no reason why with this piece of paper here that I could not, I could definitely collage some items on here. Okay. Now, I could also use and this is what I was trying to go for earlier, and I think I'm going to do it now. I could use the same picture. Uh, I could use the same picture, right, in another scale and cut out, right, one of these and add it, right? So I can combine, I can also think about combining two pictures, right? So, um, I think that this, I think I burned in, in, in Photoshop. Do you see how this flower is darker? I think I burned that in. 
So I'm going to cut it out. Oh. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to, uh, I'm kind of tempted to be like perfectionistic, but I don't know. I have to go. So I'm going to cut it loosely first because I don't know what it's going to look like, right? So, so I have to just kind of like put it on here, you know, and move it around, right? And one of the things that I do when I'm working like this is I keep my iPhone handy and I take a bunch of pictures, okay? Because I think we're all pretty used to um, our digital platforms now, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, like what, even if you're just shopping on there, but we're used to like looking at something, moving it, looking at something, and then going like, oh yeah, I like that one, right? So if you wanted to take, you know, a couple of elements um, and lay them, lay, put them together, take a picture, move it, take a picture, move it, take a picture, and then go back to your device and look at it that way. That's a very helpful editing technique. Okay. So I definitely don't see, I'm not seeing anything that I love. Partially, I think because this shape of this thing is like a fist to me. <laughs> you guys see it? It's like, a, it's like an arm. It's like a muscle arm with a fist. Like that's what I'm reading this, this shape as and I just don't like it. So that means that my cutting sucks. So let me see if I cut it better. Right? So I the cutting is unflattering. Let's just say that. So let's just see if I cut it better. If I like it better. Okay, so now sometimes I translate this into effort and hard work. Like if I'm not working hard enough, then I know that my work looks like look, doesn't look good. So then I'm like, uh, <laughs> try hard. <laughs> Literally, I tell myself to get, you know, try hard. Like, you're not, you're not, you're not doing it. You're not, right? You just put that there. So, okay. But I know that, like, already I like it better because I like, already, like, I like, in the cutting, I like the shape of the flowers, not that random, ugly shape that looks like an arm, like a fisted arm, right? That was not pretty. No, 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 not, not pretty at all. Okay, so now we're gonna be pretty and we're gonna spend more time. <laughs> gonna go into, and, this, and this can be <coughs> relaxing work. Like I sometimes too like to think about like, sometimes in the studio, you can't always be like totally profound and prolific and, you know, paint like a master. So there are other things that you can do in the studio that are helpful to your work. And one of them could be sitting and relaxing. You could even be like watch, listening to a good like podcast, right? And cutting out flowers right up along the line so that they look beautiful, right? So I used actually too like um, this win winter and, and last winter even, I would sit around on a light box and I would draw flowers, right? And these were just some activities that I did that were helping me um, familiarize myself with floral, floral shapes. So immediately I went there and I actually kind of like it. And what I, I know why I went there. Does anybody else know why I went there? Because it was something I talked about when I'm gonna give you guys the answers. Something I talked mm -hmm. about earlier today. What did I talk about? Decisions. Yeah, but what was the shape I made? When I was showing you guys that big panel, what did I make? What is this? It's like a... Arch. Right, it's like an arch. And what's happening is that there's a juxtaposition between these the positive and negative spaces, right? There's also mm -hmm. a scale shift. So if I was really gonna make this decision for myself, like in my work, in my studio, I would use my phone which, and I would take this picture I would take this picture. I would take this picture. Okay, 
So two of them I absolutely don't like, and two of them are okay. So I, but I think, I think I like this one because it makes more sense to me, right? It's more organic and it seems more possible that this, that this one would be falling this way. This one doesn't exactly make sense. But if I, but then I could do this. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? So we're definitely, we're definitely abstracting it. Um, and I'm gonna go for it. What do you guys think? Do you like this one or this this one? What do you guys think? Well, now I kind of like. Takers, commenters. It's uh, hard to see. Hard. Yeah. So. Ah. Ahead. <laughs> so this is hard to see. Oh yeah, because you guys are still just like on a small monitor. What do you mean? I'm not on yeah. like the 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 48 inch flat screen. Is tomorrow. That, tomorrow I will be. <laughs> You're gonna go and buy it today. Okay. <laughs> So, so this is an option. Oh wait, you're missing this. Wait, why is it, where's my hand? Okay, this is an option. Okay. Or this is an option. Hmm. Uh, I know the, I definitely, I know the answer now. I like that one. You do? Know? Mm-hmm, but I'm probably wrong. <laughs> You know why I don't love it is because the you know what what this is a good teaching moment though. The reason I don't love it is that this tone here mm -hmm. and this tone here are too similar. Yep, I understand. So there's no pop happening. Contrast. Yep, and I see that. Now. These two are too mirror mirror mirror. Like they look like they're reflecting each other, which I also don't like. So mm -hmm. and when I originally did it. I definitely liked it up here at the top of the composition because what's underneath here is more contrasty and different than what's going on top. Yeah. So, and this, this, do you guys see this stem right here? This actually would make sense that this flower could be at the end of this stem, right? So that also is another sign for me that it's like a connector, right? That it's that it could go there and I can make it seem make it look realistic. I also like uh, you know, I also really like this this flower being, you know, over over this area. So but I'm definitely noticing my lights and my darks, right? And how the the background is affecting the the fork, right? How these guys are working together. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this one. So even with the paper pieces, we can think about adding collage elements, combining photos together. And also, did you guys catch that this photo that I'm gluing on is the same photo? It's just on a different scale. So those are some very important things I think about making successful artwork is really a lot of trial and error, right? Mixing, mixing things together, right? Mixing scale of imagery together, tone of imagery together, and definitely like trying different locations with the collage element, maybe even photographing them and, and trying them, moving it around because moving it around thinking about it moving it around looking at it moving it around thinking about it, right mm -hmm. and also remember what technique i have right here is because i'm in the rice paper what can i do my new favorite thing what can i do are you out oh, there you are <laughs> Oh, 
Are you guys back? Hi. Yep. Hi. I lost you. We were doing really good though. We got a couple hours in. All right, and we're about to take our little break. So the other thing I can do here that is beautiful, right, is I can wrinkle. This is rice paper, and so I can wrinkle it, right? So that's gonna give me just like another little element of be beautiness, right? Just, and I can also kind of like blend my outside lines. I can sand it again when it dries a bit. I can wrinkle it. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is start, and this goes to everybody's question about composition and lights and darks, right? So when I, after I've kind of like decided I'm gonna move ahead, I did a little sanding to get rid of um, these, this rectangle, right? That was my intention to get rid of the rectangle. Um, sorry, I don't know how to, hold on one second, you guys. Uh, I'm just gonna go in this view for a little while. Now I can start to think about using the gesso to um, a stat to kind of get rid right because I oh, I'm frozen again frozen again is it the internet it could be yeah Are you guys there mm -mm. you just gotta kind of let it take too much go out too much thing. <laughs> <laughs> 